What's up, YouTubers? Today we're going to talk about the Microtech Knives MSI, Microsoft Standard Issue. Very creative name there. This is Microtech's answer to, I guess, a combination of a crossbar lock. I mean, they're calling it a crossbar lock, which it effectively does. It utilizes a spring to press against basically this hunk of metal, which then lays on top of, though this is not flat. You're going to notice this is kind of a rounded surface, and that's going to come into play in a little bit. So it, it has a little bit of that, but it also has a little bit of um, uh, Microtechs. This is a Microtech. Uh, spider Co's, they're a ball bearing lock. I don't have one out right now, but it's basically very similar where it utilizes a spring, coiled spring versus an Omega ring or Omega spring to, to generate that tension there for your lock bar pressure to go forward on top of the back of the tang. So... You know, it's kind of that, and it has a little bit of the shark lock in it as well, where, you know, that similar kind of mechanism. But enough about kind of the background of this. You probably already know about this blade. This blade has a 3.85-inch uh, piece of steel. It's it's M390 MK. It's Microtech Knives exclusive M390. It's from Bowler. I don't know exactly what it means, what it, you know, if it's a special heat treat, but I'll tell you this much. It is damn good. The heat treat on this was fantastic. I beat the heck out of it. And the edge is as good as it was on day one. So really, really good. I can definitely vouch for that. I'm kind of jumping into the pros. This knife weighs 5.3 ounces. And it priced at $268 when I bought it. These are going down a little bit. I'm seeing them for as low as $250. This particular one is the G10 model with the fragged out pattern. And, you know, I, I the frag, fragging out wasn't as big of a deal. But for me, the G10 versus the polymer. The polymer ones are definitely a lot less. Uh, from what I understand, they feel a lot more plasticky, just like one would expect versus a G10. So in terms of some kind of comparisons or alternative knives, uh, for me, the I definitely have been alternating this one with the, the Demco knives, 8020 Slimline. Um, it's, it's not quite as fat as the full-size 8020, but it's fairly similar, certainly in hand. Um, the, the feel of them is very similar, and if you kind of just look at those, the width in hand is very similar. The blade stock is a little bit thinner on the slim line, but not a whole lot. And I got to tell you, as far as cutting performance, um, the MSI held up every bit as much to the 8020. Um, that knife is a $400 knife versus 268, so a different price class. And then in terms of kind of a sheep's footy, the Insingo blade here from, uh, or the Encosian single blade from uh, uh, Chris Reeve knives definitely was kind of similar. I think the ones with the actual texturing on them, like the micarta, this one's very thin without it, just the straight tie. But in terms of a use for a sheep's footy blade, yeah, it's very similar. And then another one which really, we really started to nail in on these. Of course, the, the, the Nkosi there is $500, so a totally different price class. But in terms of similar price class, this is like $275. This is the Spartan Blades Palace in S45EN. This one definitely started to feel, I was like, oh yeah, in terms of, again, just look at the handle lengths of those. Very similar in hand, very similar blade lengths. You know, this one just doesn't have the, the sheep's foot blade. Um, this is just a regular a clip point or drop point, I guess, drop point there. Um, that's definitely an alternative, certainly a price alternative as well. It's at 275 bucks. This might be a little bit more now. But then on the on the more budget end, for like $180, I got this M4 version of the Gritalian, which is a little bit different in terms of the fact that it has a much thinner blade stock. This is definitely more for slicing. But if you want a thumb hole deployment, kind of full hand filling for a medium large hand, and you want a sheep's foot usable blade in M4 steel, that one comes and goes, I think, from time to time. The regular S30V is like $145. So if you're looking for a very useful sheep's foot in the lower price class, that might be your best option there. Um, but I think the MSI is certainly a good consideration. So those are some alternatives that you have. So this, again, uses the crossbar lock, which is, uh, you know, was known as the axis lock. Uh, this isn't the, exactly the axis lock because it does use a hunk, if you take a look at that. That, that lays straight across, we'll see how well that shows up, that goes straight across the top of that tang there. Um, and like I said, it's it's a little bit of a rounding there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate it now, The one of the cons of this, because for somebody who might be thinking, oh yeah, I want this knife, this is, this is something that you may have to consider is, um, and I got this one from the pointy end when I watched that. I always try to kind of watch reviews if I can 
of knives before I buy them, especially those that kind of cost a little bit more. And uh, I'll link his site below. But the pointy end, um, he did he did basically a just a very relatively not super hard spine whack, and 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 sometimes it passes, but sometimes it fails. I did I did actually much harder of a spine whack for each of those other models that I just showed, and every single one of them did a whole lot more. So. For this particular review, I'm starting out with that one con. Um, you know, as a static, I could not actually. This has this is super solid in terms of any static pressure. So for static cutting, I don't worry about it. But if something were to come in and just kind of bop it and hit it, I think it has to do with the shock effect and having that little rounding on the tang there. So again, I'm going to bring that up close. That little rounding right there, having the bar go across that thing and lay flat. It just has a little bit of a rounding, just enough friction when it suffers a shock. Like I said, the blade is very solid otherwise um, when it comes to static. It just can't take that shocking. Um, you know, the static resistance, just fine. So, yep, that's your one That's your one and only con. I'm going to talk about the good stuff now. This is a very large sheep's foot blade. You don't find a lot of really large sheep foot, sheep's foot blade. I think the uh, Rick Hinder and I's XM24... I did previously have that one, but for me, that knife was just too big. Um, and it was a similar, uh, similar cuttable space on the blade there. So, you know, for me, this is definitely a good alternative to that. Uh, it was uh, also, it's very well balanced. This backspacer here is quite large and, and quite titanium. Um, I showed it at the very front. But yeah, this is a very well balanced knife. So whether you're kind of, you know, in the back position, doesn't feel too blade heavy. In the front position, doesn't too, feel too handle heavy. So it's, it's really good, and I think they really manage that with that nice backspacer. They have texturing throughout that works really, really well, not too aggressive. Um, you know what? Let me go ahead and get some gloves. I didn't have this prepared, but this is supposed to be a hard-use knife, right? So we test out hard-use knives, however they work in gloves. This one works pretty well, easy enough to deploy uh, and retract. So, yeah, this is definitely, I would say, good for hard use in terms of uh, you know, glove in hand or, or that's glove on hand. It's comfortable in every conceivable holding position, whether you're in the saber, hammer grip, hammer grip forward, because you want to get really close up on that blade. Um, this nice flat here is really, really good. Pull cuts from the back position. Pull cuts if you're choking up, not too good because that thing is going to be digging in you. Um, and then the other thing was I found that the, the the pocket clip worked really well, and I didn't find it too annoying because it kind of fits right in the middle there from the back position. In the forward position, it digs a slightest bit just because it lands a little bit on below that nubbin. Um, you know, right there you can see that. It, that's the only position I found, and that's if you're really bearing down hard and you can kind of readjust your hand. So otherwise, really, really good. Comfortable, like I said, in every single position. And the G10 was super solid. You cannot squeeze this for the life of you. So I love it. They, they, they did a really, really good job. Nice thickness and everything on that. The Barlock X, I think, is really good as a grip. This one takes its DNA. Obviously, this is the Microtech Combat Truodon, but you can kind of see the, you know, it gets it straight from their OTF. Um, the, the triggers, whatever you call that, on the, uh, the OTFs. Um, it's fully ambidextrous, this knife, just like any Barlock is, but on this one, I love it. They make, they go ahead and ship it right side tip up, but they have full removable and replaceable, uh, for left hand tip up. So there's really nothing preventing you from using this. So for lefties, this is really, really good, especially the fact that they do have that mounting. You know, obviously Benjamin does a really good job with those too. I already mentioned the blade heat treat was fantastic. It was no chips at all on this, this, this thing is just it's, it's held everything I threw at it. Um, and I really, my use case for this one was working on it, uh, working on my truck in advance of a trip some time ago. And uh, I just, I, you know, when I'm working on my truck, it's usually taking a little bit of beating, kind of bopping up against some softer metals possibly, um, you know, kind of being dropped on the floor. And this thing just held up to everything in, in terms of that. Then the last thing I think is really kind of a pro on this is it kind of looks like a... Uh, kind of a 1960s muscle car um, on ball bearings. And it's just, if, just imagine, if you will, having like tires here and here. 
it, I think it looks pretty cool. It is very industrial looking in terms of it has a whole lot of screws everywhere. But this is a working knife. This isn't a knife you can bring out, you know, to cut your steak at a fancy steakhouse. This is a knife you're going to use and work with. So, you know, I, I just, for me, it, it, it looks kind of good in that context. Um, overall, what would I say is, I would say this is a solid working knife. Um, really, it, it's, I, I'm a little concerned, certainly, about if you're working in a situation where it's going to be suffering a lot of shock on that, the filling that spine test. But, you know, I, generally speaking, you're cutting in a forward motion and all your pressure is going to be on this back pin here. Um, the stop pin. Uh, so, you know, other scenarios where it could, something could pop or hit, you know, there are, you know, would I be concerned? I would probably want to be cautious on that in terms of the use about anything that might cause some of that downward pressure. Um, but otherwise for just general use, it works just fine. Um, for me, I just prefer some of my other options a little bit better. Um, I think the price is not bad, actually, $270 USA made. The materials are excellent on it. And, you know, but for me, I'm certainly willing to, sh to sell this knife for $200 shipped anywhere in the USA. Anybody who wants this, um, just go ahead and DM me on Instagram at Mitchell Bolig. I'll go ahead and put my Instagram below in the description as well if you're interested. First person that is interested for $200, it's yours. Um, save yourself some money, get a good USA made knife. And like I said, I, I really did like it. It was perfect for working on cars. Um, and that scenario was a uh, uh, knife. This is not going to fail. There's just, there's, like I said, it's very well constructed and I just, I'm going to use my other knives, certainly as other, those other shoot foot blades. Um, so hope this review was of interest, if not interesting, and I appreciate the like and subscribe. Have a great day. Take care now.